<clears throat> Good evening, evening and welcome to the April 27, 2010 edition of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. We'll start out by having a roll call, if you would, by introducing yourself. I'm Jay Chapman, acting chairman for the evening. Peter Black. Peter Howe. John Thibodeau. We have four members present, quorum, so we can proceed. We need, you need to announce that all four have to vote in the affirmative. Okay. Otherwise, it is this a majority of the, of the board, not the members present. So, if you, you, you need to realize that, and if, if, you, if you want a table because of that, uh, you, you can do that. Several years ago, I made the mistake of not tabling because of that, that lost the vote. And so, I, I, I regret to say, since the four of you are here, that if it's got to be unanimous with the four of you, I prefer to table until we have more people here, so that if there's a couple of outliers, well, the thing you could do is, is, is hear what everybody except to say, and then if you feel that it's, there's going to be one person that may go the other way, uh, you could ask for table at that point. That way you might be able to move it along tonight. I think that's uh, certainly a, a valid approach, and I'm, I'm agreeable to that as long as you understand the situation. Good. First order of business is to approve the minutes of the last meeting. March 23rd. March 23rd. That's what I was looking for. Minutes. Uh, those members that were present at that meeting, are there any comments? No. No. I'll ask for a motion to approve the meeting uh, minutes, uh, and uh, only members who were in attendance can vote on the approval of that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Minutes are approved. <coughs> Old business is readdressing the issue of variance request. Michael and Jennifer Duddy of 11 Crescent View Avenue for right sideline variance uh, that was previously requested at thirteen feet sideline variance, and that has been modified. Could I interrupt for one? Yes, sir. Second. Please. You weren't here. I was not here at the March 23rd. Have you had a chance to review to come up to speed with this meeting? Yeah, br uh, briefly, but I, I wanted to look at Peter's minutes. Okay. Well, you feel you can come up yes. to speed? Okay. I do. All right. I should have mentioned that. I have a feeling that the end. Mm -hmm. okay. I did have a feeling that the entire variance will request based on the submitted paperwork will be readdressed and recapped in, in an uh, entirety briefly for uh, since one member was not present at that last meeting. So I would request that, uh, an overview of your request from the last meeting as well as the requested modifications. The the we are attending to a new request or a modified request from Michael and Jennifer Duddy, 11 Crescent View Avenue, tax map U16, lot 41, for right sideline variance of 13 feet from the required 25 feet to replace a single car garage with a mud room and a two car garage with family room above at 12 feet from said property line. I believe that was the original request. Um, we had extensive discussion at that meeting, and the general feeling was that the comparable issue, as demonstrated in the ordinance, the definition of significant economic injury portion seemed to be the underlying reason that there was some doubt whether those uh, 
requirements of the ordinance were met. Uh, it was suggested that the variance request be tabled for further review and possible modification by the duddies, and we are readdressing that issue this evening. So if you'd like to come forward and present your modifications, we would appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And again, I'm Mike Duddy, 11 Crescent View Avenue. We are applying for a variance to, to assist in constructing an addition off the right-hand side of our house. And just to recap for a moment, Essentially what we're asking for is both a variance in the side line and a variance having to do with size. The addition we'd like to build includes a two-car garage and mudroom on the first floor. At the meeting last month, we talked about living space, one large family room over the top of that entire structure, although we're modifying it for this month. But in any event, we're asking for an addition on the side that would require a variance down to 12 feet on the side, right sideline. With the data um, generated last month and this month, we can easily show that over half of the neighborhood has a structure, primary structure, as close as or closer to a sideline than 12 feet. And so there seemed to be very little discussion that we had any problem meeting the sideline setback requirement because we could show 12 or 13 houses met that. Um, the issue had, as I understand it, really had to do with the resulting overall size of the structure, which with a two-car garage and mudroom on the first floor and living space over the entire structure on the second floor would have made the house the second largest in the neighborhood, smaller only by a little bit than one. And that was where most of the discussion occurred. I advanced several theories, <clears throat> interpretations of the ordinance to the uh, effect that the guideline that the ZBA uses for determining when something meets a comparable standard, whether it's the sideline or the size or whatever, that is having to show 50% of the neighborhood is as close or closer or as big or bigger, was nothing but a guideline. It wasn't written into the ordinance itself. And therefore, if you just applied the ordinance using the word comparable, which, the, which is not defined in the ordinance, but which otherwise means it's similar, it doesn't mean precisely the same or anything else, you had the flexibility to conclude that this resulting structure would be comparable in size. The ZBA, I think, ZBA felt somewhat uncomfortable moving in that direction, saying that it applies that rule of thumb to other structures and so why should it not apply it to this structure? In response to that, we mentioned a number of variables um, having to do with the nature of the, the neighborhood, the fact that the neighbors were supportive, nobody was objecting, and so on and so forth. ZBA still felt uncomfortable with that. One of the other comments or arguments we advanced was that in looking at comparability, you needed to look at where the future of the neighborhood was going. Um, and the ZBA was also somewhat uncomfortable with that. So taking that all into consideration, we went back to the drawing board, so to speak. We didn't have any drawings last month. I had a couple of concept drawings prepared for this meeting this month. So we've tinkered with the size. And we are frankly making an argument that is perhaps a different argument or perhaps just stated in a different way with regard to comparability, and so that's really where I think we should get to for tonight, unless the others have questions here. I'm not going to speak too much to the sideline issue. We're still asking for a setback uh, variance to 12 feet, um, but it's really a question about size. I think yeah. that was a, a, a I'll very get into the, to the good new stuff now if you're ready. It's the way I remember it. Okay. I couldn't have said it better myself, and I think your points were your, your recap was good. I'd like to, for the sake of clarification, at the last meeting, you did bring up the issue of uh, comparable property. And I, I would like to comment on that for the audience at home and for the records. And, and 
I'd just like to address our, our board's historical understanding of, of comparable as taken out of the definition of significant economic injury, uh, because this is the, the, the key point to the discussion. And let me briefly read this definition of significant economic injury. Placing the applicant for variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards, which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. Um, this was a definition that we have addressed, or this is how the ordinance states it. Um, over the years, historically, we have defined the word comparable to mean the mean, the median, the average of the neighborhood. Uh, the dictionary definition of comparable, among other things, is similar or equivalent, some uh, related words and synonyms are equal, being everywhere equidistant, corresponding like and same. And because of all those definitions, that and, I, and I'm just relaying this to you so that we can, as a board, uh, can justify how we came up with the midpoint. So we have, based on the defin dictionary definition, that's where we came up with the five. Out of the ten nearest, which the ordinance states, comparable in size, being in the middle, the mean, the middle, the average number. Uh, and we have in the past not defined that as being eight or nine or whatever. Uh, and higher, we've uh, actually lessened it, the restrictiveness, in, in saying that it's, it's in the middle, somewhere in the middle. And so that's where we're coming from. Uh, I left the last meeting somewhat disappointed that, that that we couldn't approve your variance as it was uh, submitted, but it clearly did not satisfy our historic interpretation of the meaning of comparable uh, being in the middle. Uh, as you rightfully said, it, uh, you certainly are comparable in sideline setbacks, but in the square footage. So I'm glad that you have readjusted your have modified your application and uh, ad adjusted your plans to possibly meet that. Uh, would you go over the square footage, comparable nature of the square footage, since that is the, the primary issue that we sure. are faced with? So this was the original design. Again, it wasn't drawn at the time, but just so that you would have it for comparison's sake, which was a full two-car garage living structure of the, the top. And that's not what we're asking for now. And what we've done is say, what if we simply reduced the size, the volume, um, with a structure like this? Now, interestingly, um, back in... 2003, we came forward with a design that asked for this right here, and that was approved by the CDA. And so, by taking out essentially half of the third plot, all we're now asking for is the bump out or the garage plot. So, the difference between 2003 and 2010 is 240 square feet. Even the structure in 2003, if you apply a strict definition, strict, if you apply strictly the averaging middle ground rule of thumb that you've explained, um, even in 2003, the structure didn't satisfy it. We get closer um, by removing this amount of living space, but as you can see from the chart uh, that I added, in terms of what the other houses are currently on the ground, in terms of their size, we're now smaller than, or pretty darn equal to, six other structures. 
out of the neighborhood's 24. Gets us closer, but if it is the board's view that it needs to continue to rather strictly apply that square footage rule of thumb, we're still not there. But we wouldn't have been there back in 2003 either. Interestingly, went back to the 2003 discussion, size never came up. Never once was even discussed, asked about, considered. There was no square foot da data or anything else. Um, you, you were lucky. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe so. I mean, I, but I do make the point that the board wants to be consistent, but the board has also, over time, not been entirely consistent or at least applied certain factors that it thought were appropriate to get to an endpoint. Um, but, but somehow that, that was an oversight. On, probably on my half, behalf, so. But be that as it may, I mean, there have been other decisions reached by the board having to do with structures in the neighborhood that were absolutely appropriate, even though probably at the time they didn't meet the, tank, the strict application. The end result was an enhancement of character of the neighborhood, and the outcome was absolutely accurate and correct. So, I mean, I'm not going to dance around the issue or, or anything else. Um, with reducing the size as indicated, um, we certainly, I think, move in the direction of a structure that is more comparable in size and in the direction of a structure that was previously approved. Um, it certainly is comparable, and this is the, the somewhat change of an argument from last month, and, and I'm not going to put Bruce on the spot at all, but just in what I've gleaned from my discussions with him over time is that if you look at the definition it's, uh, of practical difficulty, it's meant to create an injustice wherein a homeowner can't do something that the other homeowners, homeowners can do on their property. And if you look actually at the size of the lots in the neighborhood, this is actually something I went back and, and did after listening to John's comment about, well, is this really due to the general nature of the neighborhood or not? The lots are not all the same size. Um, in fact, there are eight lots our size out of 24. We're in the you know, those are the smallest lots in the neighborhood. All the rest of the lots are larger. Some are substantially larger. And the houses on those larger lots can certainly build a size without requesting a variance that would be comparable. Right now, they can do it without needing a variance. And so the, the shift in argument or emphasis is not to say, what can they do in the future, but to note that they can in the present do that which we can't do without a variance, which is increase the, the size of their structures because of the, the size of their lots. And so our argument is we're in a house that's on a smaller lot in this neighborhood. We cannot do without a variance what I've listed another eight or so um, neighbors can do on their lots because their lots are larger. And we're asking for a variance to do that which they could do. They haven't done it yet but they could, and that's really the gist of it. And your point is that they could do that without a, valid, uh, without a variance. Correct. I think and just to, just to draw a similar point to that, even without a variance, we can go out to the side to there. I mean, we're, I mean all we're asking for is a variance from here to here, meaning we don't need a variance to do all of this. At this point, we're asking for a variance to accommodate two feet here and ten feet there. I think your, your approach at looking at it, from my perspective, I, when I was reading your new proposal, I, I picked up that, on that approach uh, right away. I think it's a novel approach, but I think it's a valid approach. I don't object to that, that approach one, one bit by, by a, approaching the comparable in that aspect. Uh, back to what you said earlier, I would like to comment. Yes, we have made mistakes as a board. You're very correct. Uh, we're not perfect. And I think over time we have identified mistakes when we've made them and we have corrected as much as we can. And so I, I won't doubt that one bit. Um, you're a legal expert, and I know that 
you know that many times the laws and ordinances throw out rather obscure terms, and it's for the, the judicial body, and we're, we are quasi-judicial body, to interpret those. My point was that we have comparable is a fairly obscure term, somewhat. Uh, and we have, over time, tried to narrow that down to the average, the mean, and, and, that, uh, and that seems to have worked pretty good for us. I think your initial, as a homeowner, as a Cape resident, I think your initial proposal was good. Uh, we just couldn't find a way to justify the square footage. And, you know, that, I, felt, I felt bad about that, but the ordinance stated otherwise, and, and you see that. I like your new approach. I like your new um, uh, design. Back in 2003, when that was approved, did you ever do any construction no. regarding that? Why is, why is that? Um, at the time, we thought and hoped that um, we could literally take the existing garage and mudroom, leave that structure, take the roof off like we did with the main house and just put a second story over it and four building contractors later, each one of them saying there's just no way structurally we could do it. Just didn't make sense at the time. We didn't want to spend the money and we certainly didn't want to spend the money if what we had to do is tear down the existing mudroom and garage only to rebuild it to support a second story. We've had other contractors over recently and they just shake their head and say why spend the money because for the same money to not get a two-car garage just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. But that is why. So just as a, as a final comment, I, I personally was disappointed that we couldn't approve it last time. Uh, by our interpretation of the ordinance on the square footage we were unable to. I, what I see today, the proposal that I see today, I feel comfortable with as it stands. And so I'm, I'm glad you reapproached the board with uh, modified. I hope this modification is acceptable to you and your family and whatever. Uh, and so from what I see, I have no further questions regarding that. I'd like the other board members to comment and question you further. Mr. Chairman, I would, I would concur in, in your comments, essentially. Uh, when I uh, first read uh, Article 10 in your <laughs> presentation with the new interpretation of what's comparable, uh, I frankly was fascinated. Uh, I, uh, I, hadn't really, I hadn't really thought along those lines, but uh, after reviewing it, I think it does make perfect sense to define comparable as not being necessarily what is what has happened to date, but to also take into consideration what, what could happen uh, without anybody receiving a variance. And I really think that that is a, a measurement that is acceptable to me, and I hope it will be acceptable to the rest of the board. So I would be happy to vote for the uh, for the variance. We had a, a board member that uh, was a bit late. Would you please introduce yourself? Sure. Len Galino. My apologies, Mr. Duddy, for getting here late, but I did finally get here. Good, and we're glad you're here. That, uh, 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 per the original comment by Mr. Smith, uh, four out of the present five uh, uh, board members would have to approved in the affirmative. So. I'll just clarify one remark. I actually wasn't suggesting the CBA had made mistakes in the past. I was actually saying you have applied a different analysis at times in the past, but I actually, in terms of the results on the ground that I've seen, think that the, the results have been correct, not a mistake. So I don't want to leave you with the wrong impression. Well, we're, we're all human. We do the best we can. <laughs> I did have a question. Uh, if you could just articulate for me, since I did come in a little bit late, your theory as to why this pass 
passes in this. I sort of got a little bit of the gist of what's going on, but if you could elaborate one more time. Just. Yeah, I'm focusing on the part of the definition for practical difficulty that says <laughs> significant economic injury, which is a sub-definition, is defined as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying the zoning standards uh, in a way that would prevent the applicant from having a structure or, ac or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood. The argument being other lot owners in our neighborhood now, because of the more capacious size of their lot, can, without a variance, without coming to the ZBA, build structures on their property as large or larger than what we are seeking to build here. Mm -hmm. And because of that, if you apply the ordinance as it is now and not grant a variance, our argument is we are held at a, at a disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis what the other neighbors can do in that neighborhood. Because they have larger lots. That's correct. Larger lots or placement of the existing or, house in a right. location that would warrant allowing a garage to be built without or whatever. But, but isn't that also but isn't that a function of density as well? I mean, you have a larger lot. You know, you have you have your setbacks. You have a larger lot. You you, you can put a larger unit on the lot because it's 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 denser. I mean, I thought that was that's. You know, I mean, it's it's not it's less dense because they have more room on the lot. That, right. I mean, you're maintaining a certain ratio of dens to density between right. a smaller lot and a, and a larger lot, and I yeah, guess it's, that's. It's more based on lot size than it is. The lot area. I mean, that that, that particular district has a 80,000 square foot uh, for, for for creation of a new lot. So, it's it's the basis is the density by which the lot size um, rules. And and you're right to a certain extent. If it's a bigger lot but still non-conforming, it does have more opportunity to do without getting a variance. I don't know if I'm even going down the right path. Or, or whether I'm even phrasing, I guess, my, my question slash observation. I, I, I think, t to me, p you know, part of the theory behind zoning is, is you're, you're trying to maintain a certain level of, of building structures in proportion to lot sizes, to, to, to area. Right. And, and so if you've, if, if you've got a larger lot in theory, of course, it can support a, a larger structure. Um, maybe in some cases it stays within the setbacks. Maybe in other cases you, you have to come before a zoning board and, and seek a variance. Um, I, I, it's a long way of saying I'm, I'm not completely sold on just because there's a larger lot. Um, there, there are lots that, because they're larger, don't have to come before ZBA and seek, and seek a variance because, in theory, it is a larger lot, and presumably they do have the ability to, you know, to, you know, the the the, the, stru the, the lot can support a larger structure. I mean, that's part of the theory behind density, I think. But isn't that captured by the um, uh, the percentage of lot currently covered by structure measurement? I mean, we certainly fit within that without a variance, and that that factor. That is, the amount of lot covered is designed to prevent, I think, what you're talking about, which is just overexpansion on a lot. Yes. We're within that. Yes. So that's not an issue. And it seems to me that as soon as you start talking about comparables, and in the neighborhood, it's not talking about comparables only to lot, lots of my size in the neighborhood. It actually forces me and you and the town to look at the neighborhood and all those lots, some of which are bigger, some of which are smaller. You can't take those large lots out and say, well, I don't get the benefit of using that as a comparable because that's a large lot. It seems to me that if you're going to look at the neighborhood as a whole, you have to take the big with the small lots and let me use those as comparables. You're essentially arguing, gee whiz, you can't use those. They're bigger lots. You're on a smaller lot. My com comment is that's exactly what this forces me to do. And, and I, think it do I think it boils down to, to the simple fact that that Mr. Duddy would be deprived of something that either exists in the neighborhood or that can be done so that he, he hasn't got the opportunity 
to do what people have or can do. But so based I mean, upon, it's a unique approach, but I, I think But it's based much upon more. the current structures that are there, it, he doesn't qualify. But if you take into account what they could create on those other lots, then he would qualify. Correct. Without variance. And I, I'm not sure that that's going to happen a lot. Um, it, it, I think in this particular case, the neighborhood, uh, because the lot size is somewhat bigger than, in general, than, than other, other dense areas in town, that it could apply to this where it might not apply to three other neighborhoods. Uh, and, and so I that's the uniqueness of, of, that, of this situation. And I think it's worth pointing out that at all of these houses and lots in this neighborhood, this is residential A district, every one of these houses, lots in this neighborhood and the houses are grandfathered in, in their size and uh, situation because I would assume that there's not an 80,000 square foot lot in the whole neighborhood. As is. That's correct. They're not, the, the houses aren't grandfathered, but the lots are grandfathered. Lot size. All of the lots are less than 80,000, so therefore all the, lot, all the lots, I should say, are non-conforming. Legal non-conforming. I, I, uh, I this is not a question, it's more a comment, I think, but um, I, 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 mean, I, I think part of my hesitancy, and I, and I, I understand the argument, I'm sympathetic to the argument, but I, I, uh, there is a part of me that, um, uh, you know, I, that's, that is sensitive to, I don't want to say setting a precedent, but um, to me, that argument that, that you're raising, Mr. Duddy, um, which, which is a good one, um, could be raised by any homeowner in any neighborhood in this town. And uh, I think each, you know, I th uh, and I'm, I'm not sure you can apply the same standard in this neighborhood that, that, that you can in those neighborhoods, that the, uh, another neighborhood. But I, but I guess I, I, I wonder if we're not then going down the track of this board continuing to be somewhat or, or becoming somewhat inconsistent in its application of the zoning standards going forward. And that, that's why I think it's, the board should probably um, ask the question of how, how he knows that, that those could be um, added on without a variance because that's important. Once you find out you know, I mean, if, if you give it to him, you need to give it to him based on the, on the facts. Right. So if, if he's just saying that, uh, that may not be good enough. That somehow he's got to qualify his answer uh, or, or his Put in the, Give us the evidence to, to substantiate the basis that those houses could be. In. Right. And yes. if, once you get that, then, then, then you don't, you're not going down the slippery slope because anybody else coming in, they'd have the same opportunity, but they'd have to show that same situation, which I don't think they could show in a lot of cases, um, just by by visually looking at, you know, some of the. Well, setbacks a little bit, a little bit different than square footage, isn't it? Yeah. The way it plays out. But there's a lot of zones that the districts that you wouldn't be able to increase without a variance. Period. Because of the setback. Yeah. Then a whole, a whole, the whole neighborhood would be that way. So, you know. You're dead in the water, anyways. And, and again, his setbacks are not subject to question under this right. application. I mean, right. He, he clearly meets the standards. But, but if, if, if none of them could meet the setbacks, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be able to, that, well, I could well, walk the door anyways, because it's based on the yeah. fact that you can do it without a setback. Yeah. Mr. Duddy, maybe you could address Mr. Smith's comment, sure. which uh, what's is what's the evidence to support the uh, contention that all these other houses could be expanded? So you know what the, the lots are that uh, I'm basing that on because that's um, <clears throat> in Exhibit 6. Um, so we can shrink it down to those, those lots. Those lots have the frontage and, and um, depth measurements right on them, again, in Exhibit 6. 
Um, in addition to that, I literally walked around looking at the houses, um, sometimes with a tape measure in hand, uh, a large um, surveys tape measure, um, to look at where the house was situated vis-a-vis -vis its setbacks and to say, if it were 25 feet from the side, could it go up and expand over the house without a, a variance? And that's what I did. Now, the actual setbacks, which I have not done, are listed in Table 4. What I say what I haven't done is then break out lot by lot from Table 4 and match that up with Table 6. Um, but what I did do is visually go around and look at each one of these things, um, either stepping off, um, literally using a, a tape measure, um, or in some cases, if I didn't think you know, folks weren't there, I didn't want to go on their property, whatever, visually estimating from the side of the street. That's the nature of my evidence. <clears throat> While you mull that just for a moment, and I'm not going to say it's more or less than it is, but I just wanted to respond, if I could, to, to uh, John Thibodeau's comment about density. And one of the things that the ordinance is supposed to do as well is help um, implement the comprehensive plan for the town. And as um, the town has struggled with what to do with growth in the future, there has certainly been a movement to try to achieve greater density to allow for more open space around certain developments. And that certainly is a trend in the town. One of the things that philosophically, from my point of view, has always bugged me is that uh, the ordinance seems to be written in a way that if strictly applied, frankly, forces homeowners that would like to stay where they are, but are yet sort of cramped in their, their house like we are, it's a small house, to go buy a house on a big property that's going to require a lot of trees to be knocked down and farmland to be developed and so on and so forth. I mean, my argument would be a little more density in an established, mature neighborhood is exactly where you want to go to relieve the pressure on the open space in town. But that's just a philosophical point. <clears throat> Well, the, the whole reason for density is, is uh, uh, based on single family. Uh, uh, what, uh, what a particular district can support based on the square footage. That's the, the reason for, for, I mean, that's why they have density rules to keep certain areas uh, less dense. And it's all that to do with single family dwellings, more, more than the size of the houses. For example, Cross Hill, it's got open space, um, and they have smaller lots. They got 20,000, 80,000 square foot district, but they they using some of the, a lot of the lots are 20,000 around there, and they're using the open space for for uh, to, to come up with the density for that area, so that um, the houses. The, the, the envelope is almost entirely taken up by the buildings, uh, but, but everything is geared to density uh, for, 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 the, for the overall lot. So it, 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 isn't, it isn't so much to do with the size of the building on the lot as it does have to do with what the town wants to see each area, how they want to see each area grow. And that's changed over time, of course. Yeah, it does. I mean, you look at Cross Hill, that's a lot different than Elizabeth Farms, for example. Yeah. yeah. Those are signs, there's never open space, but actually, the dens density wise, they're the same. They're exactly the same. Right. But Cross Hill, they're all clustered together. Right. And, that, and that's a good thing. So. Today, 20 years ago, it was. You know, I know that um, neighborhood opinions about things are not the be all and end all in these applications. I do think it's worth noting that nobody in the neighborhood has objected to this. There's nobody in the neighborhood that's saying this is too dense, it's too large. Have you run large. this by any Pardon? Have you run this by Oh, absolutely, and I explained that last time. I mean, uh, I debated whether I should do what I did several years ago in, in trying to get a 12-inch variance to put a porch on my house, which was I went around to every single lot owner in the neighborhood, got 24 signatures of people who said, not only do they not object, they support 
getting a 12-inch variance to put a six-foot porch on the front of our house, and the CBA denied it. So I said, well, I'm not going to do that. And the argument was, well, sometimes when you approach landowners, they feel uncomfortable and they don't want to object to you face-to-face. -face. So I just said, fine, neighbors, send in emails if you object. Do it privately. I don't want to be in your face or whatever. Um, and I trust that if anybody had sent an email in objecting, it would at least be noted. But um, I've talked with the neighbor who's on the immediate side, and the neighbors around, and so on and so forth. And I can in good faith represent to you that nobody has objected. The neighbor on the side where the construction has been going is not objecting. He's very supportive. <clears throat> Mr. Duddy, walk, uh, just so I make sure I fully understand the, the exhibits, uh, can you walk me through an example? To walk us through of, um, I guess, really your paragraph 10, which is exhibit 6, and then referencing that to exhibit 4. So, I, mean, I guess the, the, what you're saying is that any of, any of the lots in paragraph 10 of your supplement uh, could be expanded without seeking a variance. Is that? Let's take a look at lot 35A. It's the first one mentioned. Yep. <clears throat> it's got a 30-foot sideline setback on one side. Um, the lot itself uh, is a deep lot. That lot has plenty of room to put a full second story and um, resulting structure uh, without a variance over most of its uh, size. Okay, which is currently 2322. Correct. Square feet. Yeah. So the argument there is that they can go up sure. without any variance. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're, they're nearly as big now, but to the extent they wanted to pop out a large dormer or something over a piece of it, I mean, they've got, for instance, a sunroom off the side that would certainly accommodate more if they wanted to, and that would make them large, as large or larger. What about on this street, Preston View? Is there any other houses there for there to be expanded? I'm sorry, Len, I just didn't hear you. What about Maybe what? Any of the houses on Crescent View that could be expanded? Uh, these are all on Crescent View. Oh, I'm sorry, Crescent View comes right around. Yeah. yeah. I mean, on that, that neck of uh, that, this strip where your house is. Uh, on the inside of the circle, yes. Take 54, for example, uh, directly across from us. That's a large um, corner lot with um, um, uh, a lot of frontage on the front. <coughs> they currently have an attached one-car garage. Um, that's why 54. They've got 25 and 28 feet setback. So that right now, that house can put a full second story over its entire length and its mudroom and garage. And that's immediately across the street from us. How many of these houses along this strip here have two car garages? Um, on that side of Crescent View, none have two car garages. My argument would be, Lena, I'm not arguing size just from the point of view of garage, but size from the point of view of size. It could be anything. It could be the house. I drove the neighborhood before, prior to the last meeting a couple of times, and I believe I counted in the Crescent View Circle six two-car garages or that thereabout. About right? Does that sound about that, right? Yeah, it does. I did the same thing. That sounds right. But I happen to want to build a garage, but again, my argument is not that I should have comparable garages. I'm just arguing comparable size. Yeah, I understand. And you don't have to argue comparable garage. Right. right. <laughs> I'll find that under the ordinance. Well, just the, by inquisitive nature, getting carried away with it. In all of the calculations, the garage is not counted in the square footage. Is that correct? Oh, no, it is. It absolutely it is. is. Yeah. In all of them. All of them. Yeah. Mr. Chair, is there any argument that uh, this conforms without this somewhat novel interpretation of Say that again. Is there any 
angle on this that allows us to approve this without this somewhat new interpretation, novel interpretation of the ordinance. The this, this interpretation that it's not existing structures, but, could, but what could be built on the lot, on the other lots. Is there an argument for that? Argument that it's, it, it meets the, the ordinance, meets the standards for granting the variance without this interpretation, without this interpretation that, that you need to look at what could be built on those lots. You mean vote by, by the fact that Plus existing only? Yeah. No. No, they've already, we already, they already went through that last meeting. That's why they sent them away to. The sideline setbacks uh, pass the standards today. That's not a question. They passed standards at the last meeting. The square footage issue today doesn't does not meet the strict standards. The non-variance view of that, however, does. That people could, without the variance, expand, and he would meet that standard. I have a question for Mr. Smith. Your, you may not, I, what would your comment be? Does this, approach at the interpretation of the ordinance, does this violate your understanding of the intent of the ordinance? No. Okay. No, I, th I think it's, it's a matter of, of, of uh, that part of it not really being in the ordinance, ordinance so that the, the board can, can look at uh, different scenarios, and this happens to be a scenario that never has been explored. Uh, so it really does; it isn't really written in the ordinance. It's something that you look at, and, and if and if you can write a findings of fact to support it, and the record's clear, there's no reason why um, you can't approve it. If as long as you're comfortable that that that, that what he's presented can support itself. Uh, you know, truly be, um, it's important to have the findings of fact to support that. Yeah. Now, it, this, now, just for clarification and understanding, this approach could not be applied to a sideline setback situation because all of those would, by clear statement of the ordinance, require variance. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, my only concern is I don't It'd only be a square footage. It's a square footage without request for variance. Right. Because because, it, because if you think about it, when you're talking about a setback, a set there's a, basically a limit there. You you have to be a certain distance from That's the fine. It's 25 feet. And 25 feet and it's 25 Period. feet. So it doesn't seem nobody else has the ability to go closer because the lot's big. It's 25 feet. Correct. But when you're talking about the size of the unit, that creates a, uh, that, that limitation is not there. My only concern, and, and I'm just trying to think it through, is I don't have really a problem with the size of your house or the scale of your house, and it seems appropriate. What I'm wondering about is, are we opening up a Pandora's box by adopting this interpretation of the statute so that the next person comes along and says, you know, I'm limited to whatever the number is, 2,000 square feet, but because my neighbors could build, you know, 5,000 square foot houses on their lot, why shouldn't I be entitled to build 5,000 square foot? That's why you, that's exactly why you have to, to, to believe that, that this is, somebody just can't come in and say, well, you know, they all can be expanded, and therefore I need the variance. I mean, it, if you believe that that, that that situation exists, and he's proven to you, that, that those can be expanded without a variance, then, then you grant a variance. The next person that comes in, if they want to go down that road, they'd have to prove the same thing. You just don't say, you don't say to them, oh, by the way, you can take this tack and we'll believe you and send you on your way. I mean, they gotta have a, a, a reasonable argument to be made to convince you that, that, that 
that you can use them comparables too. Yeah, so, I, so I, I don't think, think you. The thing I'm having trouble with, and I think it might be the same thing John's having trouble with. You have a small lot next to a large lot, and so you're basically allowing the small lot to utilize the square footage size of a large lot to justify the size of their house on the small lot. But that's our, it, it doesn't make any difference because it's all controlled by the percentage of lot coverage. Footprint can, cannot exceed 20 percent on on septic anyways. She'll never, you'll never be able to occupy more than 20 percent of the lot area. He could be convinced, you could convince him, uh, he could convince you that he should get this variance, but if he didn't have enough lot area, he'd be dead in the water. He wouldn't get a permit. He does have enough lot area. So, so that's Your concern issue. is addressed by a different metric. You see, so, of so we, we do have a limit to the size, how high you can go. And we got a limit so to the height. Between the 20% coverage issue and the height restriction, you're limit, you're, you're limited. You're, you have another limitation that controls. Correct. Correct. Well, that may answer my question. Yeah. And so from a subjective <laughs> standpoint. <laughs> yeah, I'm from a subjective standpoint, I don't think that our discussion would of uh, the increases that we're discussing would alter the nature of the neighborhood. Now, I, that's my that's my feeling. I mean, the lots could all be the same size, and you still might have comparables that could go up without a variance or out without a variance because of the placement of the of the, of the house, uh, or whether it's one story or two stories. There's all kinds of variables. So it isn't necessarily the big lot that may be the driving factor here. No. It's, it's how, how you, how you uh, expand. Yeah, I mean, my concern is I just hate to see all of a sudden we're opening the door to people coming in and putting these monstrous well, houses on small I, lots. I, I'd, uh, I'd hate to, I mean, uh, this is going to be a, one more challenge for when applicants come in to talk to me about going to the board. I mean, it's not, but I mean, I, I don't think you should, base any decision on the fact that it may, may make my job a little more difficult. I think if you truly... Well, about making our job difficult. <laughs> well, <laughs> which, which in turn would make your job more difficult. <laughs> so I think, I think you've got to look at the, the, uh, the situation and make a decision accordingly. Well, I, uh, this question is for the other board members and maybe for Bruce. How many times has this been the sole issue that we've decided? I've been on this board for a couple of years. I can't remember how many, three or four. And this is the first time we've ever had an issue with yeah. size. It's always the setbacks, which um, seem more important. And it, I mean, it seems to me that just the common sense here is that this requirement is supposed to prevent McMansions from going in to a neighborhood where they're all small main cottages, and and that's what comparable means of the same character. And he's proposing something that's of the same character in the neighborhood. And, you know, if we were to deny this request, I think we, it would have the sort of ironic effect of maybe taking away from the character of the neighborhood in the future, whereas if we grant this, it will, um, it will add, I think, all the property owners would benefit by having his house, um, you know, improved in this way. And I, and I, I don't really think it's a, a big concern when they wrote the zoning ordinance, because on a 10,000 square foot lot at 20%, you could do a 2,000 square foot footprint with two stories and have a 4,000 square foot house on a 10,000 square foot lot. So I don't know how much of a concern that ever has been. Uh, otherwise, they would have limited the, <coughs> the, uh, the, the footprint coverage. Uh, Mr. Duddy, just back on paragraph 10. Uh, so it, it, I guess your contention then is essentially is that all those lots um, could have, could build second, I mean, they're all one story now, they could all build second stories. That's correct, and going back to Bruce, it's not just the frontage, but the placement on some of those, the houses Understood. on that lot, which also has more frontage than we do. Any other comments from board members? I think it's been a good discussion. 
move. You, ought to, you have, do have one person in the audience. Well, you we're want not to speak. Oh, yeah, we're right. to that point yet. I, I'm asking for we're at the stage of the meeting where board members can question the applicant. Do we have any further discussion or questions for well, the applicant at this time? I have one question for other board members. I mean, my point was if, if we haven't encountered this issue before, does that address your concerns about the slippery slope, or do you still have concerns about that? Um, you know, I, I, I have some concerns. I don't think my concerns are going to carry the day, but, you know, I, I think back to that property we had several years ago down in the waterfront in the ocean that we ended up into a battle over how high it was, and they ended up reducing the roof size. And that was a case where you certainly wouldn't want to do anything to increase their ability to expand besides the house that was already a monster. And so that's my only concern is that, uh, you know, I don't want to get caught in a situation where we find where we have to, you know, improve these monstrous houses that, that you know, really don't fit in with the neighborhood and block other people's views. Uh, and the 20% coverage issue may, has ameliorated some of my concern. Not totally. I think it's ameliorated enough today that folk probably have favor this, but uh, it still troubles me a little bit. Well, and I'd, I'd take it one step further and say that I think, I think the, the, uh, the size restriction of 20% is one limiting condition for me. The other is the height restriction. And I, I, I think absent those two things, I wouldn't, uh, I'd be, I'm, I'm, I'm too uh, sensitive to the Pandora's box. So. Um, you know, again, probably with some reservations, I would vote for it as well. Uh, and, and those two, and that's very relevant. Those are two restrictions that are clearly stated in the ordinance. Uh, as far as the height restriction, which is, is a definite restriction, as well as the square footage of the uh, coverage on the lot. So, any other comments? Thank you, Mr. Duddy. We'll open the floor now to comments from the audience, if there are any. If you would, please, sir, state your name and your address. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Peter Hale, and I uh, live at 18 Crescent View Avenue. The back of my house uh, is one house over from Mr. Duddy's. I, I, the back of my house faces the front of his house, half the street over. Um, I'd like to make three quick points. Um, the, I'd like to offer my unqualified support for the application. My wife and I uh, own 18 Crescent View Avenue and have an interest in 17 Crescent View Avenue, which is titled to her brother and my brother-in-law. They are among the smallest homes in the neighborhood as of right now and the smallest lots. And for the record, for the evidence that you need to support the application, I've personally measured both of those homes, and I know without a variance I can get to the point of uh, size with the limitations that we've spoken about before uh, that Mr. Duddy is, and his wife are proposing. So uh, I'm, I'm echoing the point that he made earlier that we can, the, the comparables in the neighborhood, that we can get to those points without variances um, and that I think is the appropriate standard that this board ought, uh, ought to apply. And the last point I'd like to make is that the, uh, I'd like to echo a little stronger the point that Mr. Duddy made earlier about the directive of the comprehensive plan to favor density of existing neighborhoods rather than uh, uh, sort of backing off that. And I think within the limitations of the rules that we have in place right now, this is a perfect example of the type of development, the, t the type of increase that we should be encouraging, not discouraging and keeping the existing neighborhoods. And Bruce's point earlier, there are wholesale neighborhoods where you can, can't even propose this type of improvement because the constraints are already in the lot sizes, the constraints are already in the 20% coverage, the constraints are already in the 35%. And for those reasons, I believe this application should be approved, and I, again, I would urge the board to do that. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Seeing no further persons in the audience, we'll close the meeting to public discussion and open the uh, for board discussion at this time.
Uh, I would like to throw out one observation. Uh, this is totally a personal subjective observation, but as far as my understanding of the ordinance and its impact on the nature of the neighborhood, I would, I would guess that a sideline setback would be a significant alteration of the nature of the neighborhood. I would guess that a height would be a significant alteration of a neighborhood. It's just my personal feeling, and I want to make that clear, that of the enlargement, the square footage is probably the least, uh, least amount of an effect on expansion in a typical expansion situation. I'll just throw that out for information. I, I think that, is, that that is, is of the sideline and the height that the square footage of looking at all three of them has probably had the least impact on the f nature of the neighborhood. Uh, clearly, sideline setbacks do infringe on neighborhoods a lot more than square footage. And that's just my feeling. I, I, uh, in view of the application, I don't have a problem with the issue with the application as it stands. I, too, would be concerned about opening up the situation for abuse. I think that although that potential exists, I'm not sure, based on my experiences in the board, I'm not sure it would be much of an issue. I was also interested in Mr. Smith's comment that he did not see it as a potential infringement on the intent of the ordinance uh, because he is typically, it's been my experience, very concerned, very restrictive on impact to the ordinance as well as uh, opening up issues that he would have to monitor that would be of a significant issue. Uh, his comments were that he didn't feel like that would be the case. It's not his decision to make this appeal uh, variance, it's ours. I just thought that was an interesting input. As it stands now, I feel comfortable with the application. I'd like to hear other board members' I comments. Can, I continue to feel comfortable with it. I think it's a significant thing that we should be looking at. This is redundant. It is the significant economic injury, you know, and it doesn't speak to density or anything. It simply, you know, asks that that no applicant, you know, be at a disadvantage to the other residents and homeowners in his neighborhood or her neighborhood. And I think that uh, this meets that. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it's a be good for us to approve it. I agree with those comments. And I, it's also important to me that this project is consistent, just purely subjective. When I look at this project and I look at the houses in the neighborhood, it's consistent with what's going on there. And I think it would, you know, would improve the neighborhood. I would add that. Uh, to me, this is kind of a unique circumstance where uh, the applicant has put in evidence that's kind of unique that to that neighborhood where he has uh, uh, neighboring properties that are larger in square footage. And he's put in the uh, table of evidence that establishes the facts that he's asserted to justify or make relevant this interpretation. And it's not as a matter of right that you hypothetically get the benefit of this concept, but only if you can establish the evidence to do so. And be based on that limitation, um, and given the fact that from a density perspective, uh, an aesthetic perspective, it's not a um, major expansion or really a out of character with the neighborhood. Um, I'm willing to support this application as amended, as I understand it, to reflect what's referred to as Supplement 2, which is with a two-car garage and a half of an expansion over it. That's correct. 
Um, that's a good point Mr. Giolino just made, and I wanted to add the other unique thing about his evidence is he had a neighbor uh, come over with um, property that would be most affected by this project and, and state on the record that he supported the project, that it was consistent with the neighborhood. That's another good piece of evidence that supports this application. Yeah, I, I uh, think it's clearly a uh, neighborhood that is in transition. Um, I've driven by a couple times, and um, you know it's it's very evident. And uh, uh, I'm very sympathetic to trying to um, uh, you know, keep uh, old neighborhoods uh, active and vibrant. And uh, and uh, I think uh, you know your plans are consistent doing that. Some of your other neighbors have already started to do that and I'm sure others will follow. Um, I think as other people on the board have said and I know I've, I've said earlier this evening that uh, my biggest concern in all this has been uh, setting um, unintended consequences for other neighborhoods down the road for this board and uh, I think uh, those concerns have been addressed both by some of the evidence you've provided tonight namely exhibit uh, six and four and in um, your supplemental application generally and uh, and again I think the uh, the lot size limitation and the height restrictions uh, I think give me some uh, additional comfort in that in that vein so I am uh, supportive of the, of the application as is amended as well okay from what I hear from everybody I think it we could, we could either do findings of fact or you could either do findings of fact before you take a vote or you can take a vote and then, and then do the findings of fact. But do what you've done just, just now is findings of fact. We need to get each one of those points into a, a, a reasonable sentence or two. Um, we got the height and, and footprint limitations. We have uh, the fact that the applicant has shown that at least half of the, the inventory property has com comparable size or can have without a variance and that the, the property is unique and not a matter of right. Uh, so we need to elaborate upon that either now before you vote or after. It doesn't make any difference. But we, th that's, a, that's really important to get the findings of fact so that we don't have this coming back at, at us every time you turn around. Um, would the board like to well could we vote on the discussion and see if there's unanimous agreement about the facts that we all stated you can we could make but, that our findings I mean, of fact it, yeah you could do that but we, we still would like to have from the board their wording on the findings um, I, either before I, or after what I was going to ask is would the board like to vote first and then determine the findings of fact or vice versa? It, it, normally it's voted upon and then, and then you establish the findings based on the fact that you all agree that it does meet this, that, that the applicant is you know, successful and then you create the findings for the record. That's generally the way. I think the discussion is really find the, the right. findings of fact, but we can formalize that after the vote. Right, if you do the findings of fact now and you all agree to them, right. then you're, you're already, you're kind of forced into voting for it, which is probably good for the applicant, but right. if, you, if you decide now and there's not enough vote, then there's no, there's no the findings of facts change. So, so it's good, you probably should do the vote first. Any further discussion? Do we, based on our earlier comments to the applicant, uh, do we at this point need to offer him the option to table or so since we have five? five we have got five now. Comfortable with that, I assume. Uh, just as a review, there are eight standards that must be met. All eight standards must be approved, and then the final vote must be approved by a majority of four of the board. 
conclusions will vote at this time. Number one, the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All those in favor? All, of, all are in favor. Number two, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. All those in favor? Number two, approved. Item three, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. All those in favor? None opposed. Number four, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. All those in favor? None opposed. Number five, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All those in favor? None opposed. Item six, no other feasible alternative to variance is available to the petitioner. All those in favor? None opposed. Number seven, the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All those in favor? None opposed. Item eight, the property is not located in whole or in part within a shoreland area as described in Title 38, Section 435. All those in favor? I'd like to have a motion, please. I move to approve the application as presented tonight. Second. All those in favor? Findings of fact. I would propose a finding of fact that um, the property in question is subject to the 20% uh, uh, limitation for the footprint of the, of the property on the lot and also has the usual height restrictions applicable to it. And in addition, there's uh, been evidence submitted, and I propose that we find that more than 50% of the abutting properties uh, that he has given the evidence on has the ability, um, because of the uniqueness of those lots, to exceed um, the square footage that his particular uh, modification is requested. That it should be. Separated out into two different findings of facts. In what sense? Well, the hiding. Uh, oh yeah, those are all three different, okay. three different findings. And it's not majority; it's, it's at least half of the. Or at least half. Property. At least half of the uh, of the relevant properties have the ability to be uh, expanded beyond the uh, square footage of the subject property's request. Did that cover all the findings of fact that you mentioned earlier? There's a the property unique that it is totally. I'm sorry. Not a, did you, you, you mentioned that the property is unique and not a, a matter of right. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 it's also, uh, uh, this one's a little more, well, the finding I would propose is that also the subject property, um, the proposed addition is in conformity with the uh, density and character of the neighborhood in general. The board satisfied with that? Didn't you have one, Peter? Yeah, that. Um, but I think he covered it. Uh, the, I mean, the one I the one I wanted to find is not necessarily a fact, but it's a piece of evidence that we're that I'm relying on is the neighbor um, and the property owner that was affected by the project gave evidence that that it, it was consistent with the neighborhood that it was comparable. That's a, and, that's a and finding of the back. That should probably put in there. And the other one was that the just overall the the project is um, consistent with what the other houses in the neighborhood are like, and that it would actually enhance the neighborhood. That's it. And this may this may go without saying, but we're talking about the the. Uh, Expansion is depicted in Exhibit 2 of the supplemental. Yeah. 
Mr. Duddy, your variance was approved. We hope and you will proceed with construction this time. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so we don't have to go through this again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there being no communications that I'm aware of, no further business that I'm aware of, the next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, May the 22nd. May the 25th, I'm sorry. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I have that